Hello. Right, so looking at work solution 5. So it's a pre-solved problem for us. We've got a hinge here and a pivot here on rollers. And we've found the reactions. We've got this force being applied going in the left direction. And then I've got another downward load in this direction here. So let's look at uh, what we got in terms of dimensions, 4 meters each section and uh, I can see a 5 so we know we're going to be dealing with a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So um, uh, the height's not given but uh, we can guess that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do method of sections in this problem uh, so I'm going to cut through my my framework I can only cut through three members so I could take a cut like this okay now if you took a cut through these members here well you notice that you're cutting only through two members um, you so you could argue you could argue that you're either doing method of sections or method of joints because a method of joint it would be taking a cut around the joint like that so for this particular example there's actually only one place I could take a cut which I guess is here uh, where else could I oh I could take cut I could take a cut through here couldn't I that would be another possible so I could take a cut through there and that I could do a problem like that Right, so and expose those joints inside those m members. So that would be one force. If I keep the the section on the left, and then I'd expose this joint here, and then I'd expose this joint here. Now remember, with method of sections, it's uh, you only expose the the members that you cut through. Okay. Now, we're not going to do such a weird problem like that, but we're going to take this nice vertical cut through these members for our um, problem. Okay, so does that make sense? It, it, it's only the cut members where you expose their internal forces and uh, you are looking to cut through free members. So that's stage one. So, for our particular problem, go back to the course notes, and we are looking to make a cut through BC. So this that that's that member there. Through BE. So that's that member there. And then finally FE or EF. I prefer to say that's that member there. Right, so those are the members I need to cut through. There's only way I can really cut through them, and it's going to be straight down the middle. So I'm going to make this cut, and I'm going to imagine that exposes my internal forces either side of the cut. So I've got one internal force here, and then I've got an equal and opposite internal force pointing in this direction here. And then I've got an internal force here. And then I've got an equal and opposite force here. Yeah, because these members aren't going anywhere, so their forces <coughs> always have to cancel out and point in the opposite directions. Got an internal force here. And then we've got an equal and opposite internal force here. Now, have you noticed for method of sections you have got a choice. You can choose the left hand side or you could choose the right hand side and it makes no difference. Well it does make a bit of difference but um, uh, there's no wrong or right answer. Usually you choose the side which has less framework to look at it or less forces being applied. So, 
on the hull, we've, since we've got three forces on the left, two forces on the right, some students might want to select the right hand side section and do method of joints there. But because we tend to look at things from left to right, the more natural instinct is to keep the left hand section. And it's just really because it's just really how our brains are thinking. And so so it's uh, we we you know you can you can ch choose either there's no no wrong or right answer here so but we need to get rid of one section so i'm going to make the cut and i've decided to get rid of the right hand section so i'm keeping the left hand section now I made my cut through my members. I can then make those members as if they're forces pointing down the member. So that's the BC one, the BE one, and the FE one. Okay. Now here you've got a choice where you could step over or skip over the process and just go straight into resolving forces in the x and the y direction. Notice we have three unknowns. So one, two, three. So I could resolve forces in the x direction, resolve forces in the y direction, Oh, so that gives me two equations, three unknowns, I have a problem, and of course I am saved because I could take moments. So they are three conditions, I have three unknowns, i.e. three equations, I have three unknowns, which means I can solve the problem. Um, yeah, as I said, so we could, we could take a, uh, a skip um, and go from this diagram plump everything into here and then try to solve it. There might be a, a prior step that you might want to apply before you do that and that's to deal with this force that's going down this member, we're calling it BE, and uh, split that up into a uh, <coughs> vertical component and a horizontal component. If we take that step, it does make things perhaps a little easier than to, well, it definitely does make things easier to then to apply this. So you can either do the the resolving the forces now, or you can delay, um, um, delay it and then have to work it out if you skip the step. So here we are, and we are going to um, resolve f f uh, resolve the BE force. So we're going to work out what this force is into those two components. So I'm going to get rid of this force going off in this sort of screwed screwed direction here, skewed direction here and I'm going to resolve it into two components. So you might want to make yourself a little triangle here or we'll box it up like this and then uh, draw a little side diagram trying to figure out what's going on. So I've got this BE force which I'm saying is pointing down in this direction Notice I've decided that all my forces are going to point away from the joints. I don't know whether they are or not, but that's what I've decided. And then if I end up with a negative answer, then I know that I am. That's fine. I've just got a problem in compression. So this is my theta. And then I can think how these things are going to get split up. So yeah, that's going to be the adjacent there, the BE, cos theta. And so that's the opposite, so that's going to be the BE sine theta. 
three, four, five triangle, so we don't really want to use angles. So we do want to here, in this case, use causes and sines. So, got magically got rid of my force going off in this direction, and I've replaced it with this force going in the horizontal direction, and I've replaced it with a force going in this vertical direction. And we can imagine that it's coming out this point here. Okay. So I've resolved it. Now I've uh, got everything ready to um, uh, put this into my conditions of summing up the forces in the x, summing the forces in the y, and taking moments. Before we do that, Let's think about where it would, what would be a good plan. So you can same with method sections, method joints. You could plan which one you're going to do first. There's no wrong or right answer. You don't have to follow this process of x, y, and moments. You can, if you want, mix things up and uh, decide to take moments first. Um, so taking moments is a bit, bit, bit tricky. So uh, maybe this is something to consider. <coughs> the forces. So do we resolve forces in the x direction first, or do we resolve forces in the y direction? If I was doing this problem, I know that I would choose to resolve forces in the y direction first, because I've only got one force component going in the y direction, whereas in the um, x direction, I've got this force component going in the x direction, this one and this one. So this equation here actually is something I probably want to save to last. So um, let's see uh, what we do on the actual work solution in the course notes. Are they going to go for y or are they going to just be kind of templated and formatic and go for the x? So they're going to look at the framework and uh, sort out their angles. So, so we, we previously done that, and work out what the cos theta is uh, going to be. So the cos theta will represent four divided by five, and the sine theta will be three divided by five. So is that okay? So remember, we've got we had that force, the BE, going down in this direction. And what we want to do is, if BE is going off in the x direction, how much of it is going to be um, in this direction? So you can think of this in terms of ratio of lengths. So going off in this direction, we've got 4 divided by 5. And going down in this direction, we've got 3 divided by 5. Okay, so notice they're always going to be fractions of the BE. So um, here, and, it, and we're just using this length divided by hypotenuse, this length divided by hypotenuse. Okay, so the um, other thing I wrote was BE sine theta. So BE sine theta is the same as saying 3 over 5 BE. And here I wrote BE cos theta, which is the same as saying 4 over 5 BE. Okay. So let's replace these trig, horrible trig terms with these nice ratios of lengths. So I've done that there. Oh, yeah, so whoever worked out the work solution agrees with me. We should resolve forces, first of all, going off in the x direction. So I'm going to define um, upwards to be positive, and I'm going to look for the forces that are going in the upwards direction. So I've got one force here going in the upwards direction, and I've got this force here going downwards. Okay, I can't see any other forces. I don't know if you can. I can't see any. So 
So I've got the 47.5 going upwards. And then I've got minus 3 over 5 BE. And so because it's going downwards compared to my arrow symbol, OK, that is going to have a minus to it. And because this is going upwards and it agrees with my arrow symbol, that's going to be positive. Let's rearrange this a little bit. So we have the BE term on the left hand side. Take the 47.5 uh, 47 over to the right hand side. And we're going to end up with 3 over 5 BE equals 47.5. Now let's take the 3 over 5, flip it, and take it over to the right hand side. And that gives us 5 over 3 times 47.5. And put that into our calculator. And I hope we get. 97.17 kilonewtons. So we found what BE is. Okay. Now, if I was doing this problem, the next thing I would do would be to take moments. But I, I'm guessing the in the coursework, what they're going to do is they're going to resolve forces in the x direction. Let's see what happens. <gasps> they did what I was going to do. Okay, so why take moments? Well, we've got kind of a hinge going on here. So that's usually a good joint to take moments at. And the reason for that is it gets rid of um, these forces. So these forces here, this BC force, this B force, that B force going down, they're all going to go. OK, so we're going to take moments. We're going to go around clockwise. So draw in your diagram a nice clockwise face. And uh, then that helps us work out where, whether the moment's going to be positive or negative. So I'm going to measure this distance from here to here. And then I'm going to see that I've got a moment going on there. Yeah, so you can see that. That moment wants to go anti-clockwise, and my clock face is going clockwise. So that is therefore, and this length I think is 3 meters, so that is therefore going to give me a minus 3 Fe as a moment that I can see. OK, I've got these two forces here, so they're causing me problems because they're both going to cause me moments. This force here, this 90 kilonewtons, what I'm going to do is imagine that that's going to be allowed to move to this position here, and then I'm going to measure its distance. So you always want to get your, um, your forces so that they're lined up on the axis, either the x-axis <coughs> or the y-axis. Okay. So taking this force here, move it across here, then we measure the distance. That's also going to be anti-clockwise, like the Fe, so minus 90 times by 3. And this one here, we've got to take all the way up to the top, because this is where my pivot is. And then I measure this distance. So the distance from here to here, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that should be 4. So that is going to be a force which is going upwards. Okay. This is going upwards. So both of them are pointing in the clockwise direction. So we're going to have plus 47.5 times by the distance, which is from here to here, 4 meters. Or rather, I should really be saying from here to here, 4 meters. Okay, so times by 4. Can't see any other moments, so I need to tidy this up and find out what Fe is. So here we've done it. We've done the minus 90 times by 3. So we've taken this 90, taken it to this point, measure the distance, 3 meters, and we get a minus 90 times 3. The 47.5... Uh, we've taken up to this point here, we've measured its distance, we found that to be 4 meters. So that was a clockwise um, force. 
and this one here is going to be uh, anti-clockwise so minus 3 Fe okay rearrange this so multiply these numbers out put them in your calculator um, we don't want to leave answers as if they're pure maths we want to be engineers so so that's going to give us our final answer Fe and then we could tell the reader that the Fe value is in compression as well because it's a negative answer okay So I say the most difficult one for last. So I'm going to resolve the forces in the x direction. So I've, so we've got this going in the x direction, this going in the x direction, this going in the x direction. We've got this going negatively in the x direction, and we've got this positively going in the x direction. So these two forces are going to end up, end up cancelling each other out. So it's going to be a question of substituting in our value that we previously found for BE and substituting in our value for FE, or I prefer to call it EF. So let's add up my forces going left to right. So 90 in the positive direction, minus 90. So they are ending up cancelling each other out. So we've got 4 over 5 BE plus BC plus FE equals 0. Let's rearrange them because the unknown is the BC so we'll put that on the left, we'll put the known values on the right and then we're going to substitute in the previous results. So substitute in the previous results and I should get BC is minus 36.67 compression. Does that make sense? I think so because we've got weight coming down here, so that's I should expect that to be in compression. Yeah, so that's fine. And is that it? So the alternative method is that you actually work out what that angle is, so you don't have to work with these ratio of lengths. Okay, so you work out what the uh, what the theta angle is, and then you substitute that theta. Uh, back into those functions of causes and signs. So if you prefer working with causes and signs, this is the way to go. Okay. So yeah. So rem let's remember what we had for theta. So theta was here. It had three here and I think four here. So this thirty-six point eight seven, I could find from doing. <coughs> Theta equals arc tan, which on your calculator looks like tan inverse, and the opposite is 3, and the adjacent is 4. So that gives me the theta value, which I can then plug into these, um, these terms here and here. So plug them in, and I end up with the same result. Uh, we're doing the same thing, aren't we? We're resolving in the y direction, first of all, and we end up with the same value as we did here. Problem with using uh, angles is you tend to get a little bit of truncation error creeping in. Okay, for this one, uh, there's no angles involved, so we end up with exactly the same equation as before because the thing which the force that's been split up is this BE force originating from here. Okay, and so since I'm taking the pivot around this location, um, there's no angles involved in, that, in this particular case. And then finally, I'm going to resolve the forces in the x direction. So instead of using 4 over 5, I'm going to be using cos 36.87. Okay, so that means I just put that in my calculator. Obviously, make sure your calculator is set to. Um, <coughs> let's, let's go up. Make sure that your calculator is set to uh, be in degrees if you're doing this approach. So 
there's the final result. So then we have our final solution. Let's label them up as if they're compressive or intention. So that one's in compressive, that one's compressive, and that one's intention. So the positive and negative signs, um, if it's positive, it's going to be intention, and if it's negative, it's in compression. Tension means that it's being pulled apart. If it's co in compression, it means it's being pushed together. That's it. It's all dark. We like the dark.